Well, good morning, all you early risers. Uh, what they used to call in Middlesbrough, the twixt and tweeners. Every wake up in the morning and radio station and say, get out of bed, you twixt and tweeners. Get out from twixt between the sheets. <clears throat> so it's good to see so many that could remember to turn it back or turn forward, excuse me, and actually did. Now, in my own personal opinion, wasn't that just the most perfect waste of a good snow? I hate snows that come overnight. If it's going to snow, I want to see it snow. I want to sit in my rocker and sit and look out the windows at the birds and watch the snow pour down and feel real good and comfy in my nice little warm chair. But do what? No. <laughs> at four o'clock. Well, I could, I'd have to turn the lights on to be able to see that. At my house, I would have. Huh? Need to come to town, come to town and uh, you see all see it all happen. See it all well, anyway, it will be gone soon enough. Of course, my thermometer this morning read eight, eight or nine, something like that. So it, it's quite it's quite chilly out there this morning. So anyway, it's good to see everyone here today, and. Uh, under our announcements, we, of course, we have the prayer vigil, Bible study on 11 o'clock on Saturdays. And it's good to have Beth Malone with us once again. She says, <laughs> I just had to do that, didn't I? <laughs> I'm not even sure she heard you, but it was fun. Oh, she heard. She heard me. <laughs> Oh God! Oh, she's gonna make me pay. She's gonna. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, continuing announcements. We got the Lenten service here tonight at 6 p.m. with uh, Ed Literal bringing the message, and then you can see the rest of the dates are in the bulletin for the rest of the, uh, the month and up to leading up to Easter. Okay, so uh, any other announcements? Anyone? Okay. All right, how about birthday, the anniversary? Okay, so we don't have that. So let's just all stand and sing hymn number 368, My Hope is Built. 368 if you're in the hymnal, otherwise look up. Give me 
please be seated. Okay. Do we have um, praises and concerns we want to lift before the Lord? Yep. Okay, and you guys are, uh, it's a funeral. Okay, yep. I'd like for everybody that can to come tonight to church. Yep. We need to make a good start from our church. Yes, you know, and remember, the last time we were able to do this, Ed was the one that preached, and then they stopped it. If you remember, remember we were up in Sodaville, and Ed Literal, he, he was the last. I preached the first one, up, and then Ed was the second one, and then poop, that was it. They stopped us. So uh, if, if we don't show up tonight, I'm afraid he's going to get, you know, some kind of a complex. <laughs> okay. Oh. Candy and Judy both need our prayers. Um, Greg, I have too much for you. Okay. One more time. Okay. Yep, Danny, I got it. You're num that one's number one. Carl, a friend of Danny's, uh, has had several heart attacks down, where'd you say, Alabama? North Dakota. North Dakota. Eh, close. <laughs> yeah, it was close if you're flying, you know. But um, so we ne need to remember Carl. Oh, my. Okay. Yep. Yep. We still remember Dreamer. Okay. Gail, as I, as I understand it, is home. Because I called the hospital and... She weren't there, you know. Of course, you never know, but anyway, that's what they said. I did speak with her. She is doing better. We do need to continue to pray for her. Of course, she is weak, but she, she said she is doing better. Now, Gail was a lot better the last time I saw her. I, I lose track of days, but maybe it was Friday, and then she was Thursday. The, you know, so she was a lot better. Okay, anybody else? And um, we've got some special music tonight. And uh, want to thank Jamie for getting the uh, the CD for Nedra. Now, did you say that somebody else was going to sing too, Patty? We're hopeful that somebody else is going to sing a little bit lower than what Nedra would be singing. Not that there will be any pressure. No pressure. No pressure. After, what would you call it? A, a bus? After I got thrown under the bus. You got thrown under the bus? Yeah, well, you know, Patty has uh, been known to do that kind of thing. <sighs> oh, that's funny. Okay. Mary Lou, did you did you tell Kathy about the uh, the sermon I preached a few weeks ago about that about that bakery jumping out in front of me? And making me eat a, a half dozen donuts before I got to 
back to Lucasville. It was terrible. It was a terrible thing to do. How do you get that big old building to move like that? That's an old building. And just jumped right out in front of me. All right, if there's nobody else, we'll, we'll, we'll pray together. Oh, well, of course, I'm going to put that down. Uh, the, the people in um, Ukraine. And yes, that's always a blessing. And as I understand it, all of Europe pretty much is just, they, they're fed up. And uh, they just, you know, so hopefully they could put the pressure on them, you know, and uh, they'll get out of uh, their neighbor's backyard. I don't know, you know. Well, backyards are okay just as long as you don't cross the fence. You know, you got to, you got <laughs> uh, Okay, let's pray together. Gracious God, we do thank you for the opportunity to be here and to worship you. We thank you that you're here this morning. And uh, come Holy Spirit, touch our lives, touch our hearts, and uh, be with us. Lord, we um, do pray for the Ukraine and for our nation and for the, for the world, Lord, that you would just be there in a mighty way. And again, we, we pray for Putin, <coughs> that you would speak to his heart, and get him out of, uh, of the Ukraine. Father, we, we pray for uh, Carl in and, uh, and North Dakota when, with all these heart attacks. And we just uh, continue to lift him up. We pray for travel mercies. Um, for the uh, PHS uh, band and choir. And for a funeral that Mark and, and Sue's got to go to. And for uh, Noah. and um, As they're headed back toward um, Alabama. And Lord, we, we pray for um, Judy. And ask you to be with her. As she's not feeling well. And for Candy. You know the situation, Lord. We just ask you to touch it. Um, we pray for unspoken requests that, are, that have been asked and lift them up we pray for Dreama and for Gail and uh, Thursday for, for travel mercies for, for Phyllis and uh, ask you to, and for family just be, be in that situation, Lord. And Lord, be here tonight. We pray for, the, um, for Ed and for the, as he brings the message. We just ask you to be with him. And uh, just, just be with it in a mighty way. It's been two years, you know, since we've been able to meet and praise you like that. We continue to pray for uh, Sam and Linda. I ask you to be with them. And for Rick and Tina. And Lord, we pray for the unsaved. I ask you to be with all of them. Let those who hear this message online, let it touch their hearts and lives. All of these things we pray in the precious, loving name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the and the power and the glory forever. 
Amen. So if the ashes will come forward, we'll worship with our tithes and offerings. Gracious God, we pray that you would use these tithes, these gifts, these offerings for your glory. Wherever they're needed, around the world, in, your, in this community, in this church. And we just lift them to you, asking you to, to magnify them, to multiply them for your glory. In your name we pray and ask. And amen. So if you remain standing, we'll sing our second hymn, number 365 in the hymnal, hymnal Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Yeah. 
Please be seated. Our responsive reading is actually the Apostles' Creed. Um, I'm sure Jamie's got it up there. Yep. Um, it's 881 in your hymnal if you want to do it that way. But we'll read it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Virgin Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Then he rose from the dead, Sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From the end shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of Christ. Amen. All right. Now you get to listen to me drone on for about an hour, okay? Not that long, I promise. Um, well, we sprang forward, forward an hour, and hopefully we can enjoy another you know, hour of sunlight this evening and the next day and the next day. You know, just about everybody seems to like more sunlight but not everybody likes losing an hour of sleep to get it. My wife Carol is one of those. She, she hates losing that extra, that, that hour. You know, some um, people might have um, got up late and had to run a little faster <clears throat> to get here. And there'll be some who might not make it at all. I think that's happened, you know. And some might be saying hello as we're leaving. <laughs> You're going to be going to Sunday school and they're going to be gone. Oh, hi. If that happens, that's a perfect reason for make them stay for Sunday school. Yes. Perfect reason. That happened to me one time. I was pastoring. Um, you know, people, they were, oh, hi, man, everybody, it was good to see you. Everybody's here. We were leaving, you know, like, oops. But it seems like everything that appears good for us comes with some um, challenges and sacrifices. You know, we get an extra hour of sunlight, but we had to sacrifice an hour of sleep. Hmm. Well, you know, if you see the title of the message, oh, I didn't even have you read the scripture. Get up here. No, I want you to. No, I want you to read that scripture. Oh, I tell you, I just, I just can't even remember sometimes. We'll let the slide. Morning. Good morning to you, finally. Today's reading is from Luke, chapter 9, verse 22 through 24, the English Standard Version. The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. May you be blessed by this reading. Thank you. Yeah. He knows to do what he's told. He's trained well. Sacrifices. 
Was it a sacrifice to get up an hour earlier this morning? I don't want to hear it if it was. I mean, really, think about it. The sacrifices that he just read about, those are sacrifices. The God of all creation sacrificed for us. You know, I was thinking about giving up Lent this year. At least, at least the way the, the church typically does it. Because God's not uh, interested in what I give up for just 40 days and then right back to the same old thing, you know. He's interested in me giving up the sins in my life. Ooh, did he say that sin, that S word? Sin? You're not supposed to say stat. You're supposed to make me feel good. But he's more interested in me giving up the sin in my life, and that'll make Easter. Everybody likes Easter. An even more joyous time. I told Jamie, do we still have um, sunrise service? Do we ever do that here? Well, I don't know. I'd have to give up some sleep. Um, but I told Jamie, I said, I remember laying down on this front pew after sunrise service because I didn't want to go back to the, up to the house you know, up to the parsonage to come back down at 9 o'clock. I was stretched out there on that pew right there. Precious times. The most holy day, Easter, is the most holy day of the Christian year. But it doesn't enjoy the, the fanfare given to Christmas, does it? Or even Thanksgiving. And last week, remember, we talked about Ash Wednesday a little bit. You know, how that's a time of mourning our sin. And make, you know, and that's, oh, I said it again. Sin. And it makes our sacrifice necessary. And on Ash Wednesday, we began our Lenten journey and our march towards Calvary. Where our Savior was going to die. But we don't like to think about that. We just want that glorious resurrection morning and that great getting up morning. We sang that in college. Isn't that great getting up morning? Fare thee well, fare thee well. But before we get there, we got to march toward Calvary. We got to march toward the cross. It's not time to focus on Easter, that resurrection Sunday yet. But Lent is a season of Soul searching and reflection. Now, people wonder where this came from. In the earliest days of the church, Lent was a time of um, preparation for Easter when new Christians were tested. And only then could they be baptized or take communion. They had all this time, these 40 days, to be tested. Were they prepared for what it was really going to take to hang Christianity on their shoulders? Are we ready? You know, the, 
there'll be a uh, purple and then a white, um, what do we call it, Neil, that we hang on the cross? You know, the, huh? You know, it'll be hanging there. Are we ready to hang that on our shoulders? We're to, by observing Lent, we imitate Jesus' time in the wilderness. You remember that? Remember reading that? 40 days he spent in the wilderness. But how can we use these 40 days of Lent to prepare our hearts for Christians' most sacred day, Christianity's most sacred day? And what do we do during the 40 days to get ourselves out of this business as usual mentality and turn to a more spiritually focused life. Have you ever noticed, you know, we might not want to, but how we're strong enough to work 40 or 50 hours a week, sometimes way more than that. 70 hours, sometimes. But we're just too tired to come to church for an hour on Sunday. It happens. This church used to be full. This building used to be full. The church used to come and fill this building. Because we're the church. Not this building. You know, we feel good to, enough to go to Walmart for an hour or two. But we just don't seem to be able to go visit a shut-in or a depressed member, or someone who's sick, and encourage them. Everybody got their feet under their pews? <laughs> You know, we sit on Sunday morning and say, well, I'm just not an emotional person. But we go to a sporting event, even watching it on TV. And we shout and cheer, but we can't even open our mouth to say amen on Sunday morning. Some of us even watch them sporting events on 85-inch screens. <laughs> if I didn't love you so much, Frank, I wouldn't pick on you. I don't know if I ever told you that. Well, we got time, so I'll go ahead. When I was pastoring in, in, in um, Circleville, it's like everybody that I went and visited had big screen TVs. Of course, they weren't big like they are now, you know. But uh, they bought me, I must have said something to somebody, but, and they bought me a 32-inch screen TV. Now, that thing weighed 100 pounds if it weighed an ounce. I mean, it was, you know, the big old-fashioned, about that deep, you know. Good people, good, good folks. Emmett Chapel, Emmett Chapel. What a, what a good bunch of people. But hopefully, get back, get back to the, the message. Hopefully, Lent will help us be honest with God. 
and, and become more connected to his will for our life. The f Christian faith is about imitating Jesus. And we have to realize he said some uh, pretty radical things. But today we just tend to pick and choose just the parts of his life that appeal to us. Them things that we think are important. And we often get caught up in the wrong stuff during Lent. We tried to make it appear that we're doing things to deny ourselves and draw closer to God. But then we do the same things over and over again for Lent. You know what I'm talking about. No TV. Nowadays, no internet, maybe. Give it up. No restaurants. Well, you can't cook on Sunday. But you can go to, you can go to Bobby's and, and, uh, and make them people cook for you. Always wondered about that. No soda, <clears throat> no sports, year after year. How many times do we need to do the same thing over and over again? How many times are we going to give up the same things? Make the, make the same sacrifices yet still not draw any closer to God. You know, Frank, if you missed one of them Buckeye games, you think that would affect the team? Oh, it's her. Oh, it's, her. it's all her. So that's why... <laughs> he blamed it off on you. Yeah. It's true. Oh, it is true. See, but we get so excited about that stuff. But does it really make any difference? No. Some people think that social issues are important. So they'll focus on soup kitchens and homeless shelters and, or maybe addiction centers or battered women's shelters during this time of Lent. But normally we do that like at Christmas time. We'll go volunteer at a soup kitchen, but never any other time. Matter of fact, there's often so many people volunteering during the Christmas holiday that they don't need anybody else. Yes, Jesus fed the hungry on two occasions that's recorded. when they'd come to hear him preach. Salvation Army used to do that an awful lot. They'd feed the hungry. Now you know the Salvation Army was started by a Methodist. Just threw that out there in case you didn't know that. They used to do that. They'd preach, sing a few uh, rousing songs, and then they'd feed them. And 
And Jesus was a defender of women in a very, very sexist world. And some folks are drawn to moral issues. Now, they'll picket um, abortion clinics and campaign against all kinds of moral issues and point to how Jesus dealt with the money changers and the Pharisees. Are we Pharisees? Ooh. I told you to slide your feet back underneath them pews. Still others are more excited by doctrinal issues. <laughs> They'll spend hours imitating Jesus. Hours thinking about... Um, Greek and Hebrew meanings of things. There was a lot of those when I was in seminary. But Jesus didn't open a soup kitchen. He didn't fight Roman authority. They wanted him to, but he didn't. He didn't get legislation passed that would keep people from publicly sinning. Jesus did fast and pray. Did you hear that? Jesus did fast and pray during his ministry. He did deny himself. And ultimately, he sacrificed everything. And so the question becomes... Are we willing to go beyond this, uh, the comfortable level of self-sacrifice that we normally observe in order to uh, more closely imitate Jesus and prepare our hearts for Easter? Easter's just a month away. Now, probably this self-denial time will result in extra time in your schedule. You know, think about it. You give up uh, shopping or preparing elaborate meals. Give up television, Facebook, or other indulgences, you'll discover just how much time we waste. Are we willing to spend some of that time in self-examination? I'll warn you, it's not pretty, and it doesn't feel real good. Ever noticed how most of us can uh, see all the faults in other people? But we can't see anything wrong with us. Is Lent really, is it really a time of self-denial for us? Jesus tells us it's a time to give up something. But he's not really concerned about us giving up stuff. He's concerned about what's going on right here. Because Lent is a time to give up sin in our life. Like like the sin of hypocrisy. Ooh. 
acting like a Christian on the outside, but being proud and self-centered on the inside, or, or, or being a Christian on Sunday, but living, uh, living like an unbeliever on Friday? How about giving up the sin of being spiritually slothful? Well, someday, someday I'll, I'll get my spiritual act together. But, but right now, I, I'm just too busy focusing on everything else. Except God. Self-examination's vital. And Lent is a time of mourning and sadness. A time to respond to the call and reflect on our need for God. And that's crucial in choosing a, a discipline to really observe Lent. You know, instead of giving up something for Lent, why don't you start reading your Bible for Lent? Or fasting, you know? <laughs> oh. it's a, that can be a means of self-examination and denial. But for a person, listen... For a person to stand before God and say, well, there's nothing wrong with me. That's incompatible with Christianity and it's un unacceptable to God. Did you hear that? It should be this. Without the blood of Jesus... Everything is wrong with me. Yeah, Lent, you know, the Word tells us the, the Lent's time to give up something. Well, Jamie, I didn't tell you to put 2 Corinthians up. See that, that hour sleep, what it did to me? But now we're on Matthew 15, 8. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. Are we honoring God with our lips, but our hearts aren't anywhere near God? This, God, this has to go beyond the outward appearance. The, the change has to be inward. God doesn't merely, this, that's the easy part. He doesn't just command outward obedience. He demands inner obedience. He desires, he longs for our love and trust in him as the one and only God. And that his name be continually in our hearts as we go about daily life in conversation with Him. He commands that we never neglect His Word and to help those in need. And defend those that others tear down. A Christian says, Jesus has overcome my sin. Taking away all the things that are wrong with me. So sisters and brothers, Lent should not be used as some, or viewed as some legalistic act, but rather an opportunity to set time apart for spiritual cleansing 
for renewal, for preparation. Now, there's no specific mention of Lent in the Bible. It doesn't mention that. You know, a time set aside, you know, for repentance and mourning is the ashes. Now, that's mentioned several times. But somewhere along the way, it seems like the church has obscure, uh, obscured the reality of the resurrection. And the further our culture moves away from God, the more that we're willing to accept anything. And sadly, I don't know if we've ever recovered church. The eyes of the church have become accustomed to the darkness and become comfortable inside, you know, our four and no more. That's not church. Laying down the, the banner of resurrection. How could we do that? We, we heard that scripture that Mark read. How could we do that? And yet we do. Now Lent is to be a time where we pursue where we haven't gone yet. And experience more and more of the incredible, inexhaustible God. So this year, decide to seriously take Jesus' word to put oil on my head and to wash my face and just do Lent different. When they would fast, they would put ashes on their face and, oh, it was terrible. And that's where that Jesus says, Pull it all on your head. Wash your face. Don't act like you're so gloom and do Lent differently. Take away this dreariness and put on the joy of the Lord. Live. Live out loud. Live in love. Live in praise. Give up doing those things in your life that keep you from focusing completely on your relationship with God. And give in to His loving, redeeming rule. We learn what it means to be sanctified and empowered and cherished by our loving God. Okay, we're going to sing our closing hymn. I had to, I got to find it, but it's, it's in here. It's on page 165, I think, right? Yes. Hallelujah, what a Savior. <laughs> Let's sing verses 1, 3, and 5. Man of sorrow.
Hallelujah. What a Savior. Amen. May the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. And God's people said, Amen and Amen.